Hi everybody, today we are going to do Unit 1 Lesson 4. It's types of angles and their relationships. But before we start talking about angles, we need to talk about what a ray is. So can you go over to the box on the very right? And what I want you to do is starting at the letter X, I want you to draw, um, st start at X and draw a line out through W. So it's gonna look kind of like this, but I want you to put an arrow on the part that comes after W. That is a ray. A ray is part of a line with one endpoint that in extends indefinitely in one direction. So that thing that we just drew, that is ray xw. And the x has to be listed first. The x is the starting point of the ray, and then it goes off in the direction of w. Let's try another one. So everybody start at s, and let's draw a ray that goes out through t. So it's going to go like this and it's going to have one arrow. So if it starts at S and goes out toward T, then that would be called ray ST. And notice there's only one arrow over a ray. So just a little thing you should maybe note is the starting point must be first. Starting point must be first. So in this case, you could not call the blue ray, you could not call that ray WX. It starts at X, so X has to go first. Okay, going down to the next part, will you please draw ray BA? So go ahead, start at B, and you're drawing in ray BA. Should look like that. Now will you please draw ray BC? So what we did is we used two rays, but those two rays together formed an angle. So an angle is formed by two non-collinear rays. Um, those are going to be the sides of your angle, and they meet at a common point or a vertex. So the thing that we just drew was angle A, B, C. And if you just picture yourself kind of tracing from A to B to C, that's the order that this angle would go in. Sometimes you'll also see um, a number in there. Sometimes you might see like a number one or a number two in there. I could also call this angle two. So angle ABC, you can use three letters to name an angle, or you could use a number that's down in that corner of the angle. What are the sides of this angle? Well, one side is ray BA. Right here, this starts at B and goes out through A, and that's one of the sides of the angle. The other side of the angle is ray BC. Starts at B and goes off towards C. The vertex of the angle is like the corner. In this case, the vertex is the B. It's where the point is, or where the corner of the angle is. That's called your vertex. So this is what your homework is going to look like. You're going to have a picture, and then you're going to answer some questions. Name a ray with vertex D. So we need to name a ray that starts at D. There's more than one answer that would work, but if you think about a ray starting at D and then going off in one direction, one answer could be ray db. It starts at d, goes toward b. I could also name that same ray ray dg because it also starts at d and keeps going out towards g. So I'll just write that. You could also name this dg. That's actually the same ray. There's other ones too, like you could use ray de as well. So you really only needed to use one of those answers. I put all three. Number two, name an angle with vertex B. Find B on the picture. We need to name an angle whose corner is at B. So one angle we could name, here's B right here, we could name angle A, B, G. This angle right here has its vertex at B. So I could say angle A, B, G, and that would work. But I could also name this angle right over here. It also has its vertex right at point B. So I could name that angle 7. Or I could name that angle ABD. I could also name angle 6. I could also name angle 5. 
all of those angles also have their vertex at that same point, and that point is B. Number three, name the sides of angle five. Well, angle five is right over here. So one side of the angle starts at B and goes off towards G. So that side we could call ray BG. It starts at B and goes toward G. The other side of angle five is gonna start at B and go off towards E or F. So I'm gonna call it ray BE. You could have said ray BF as well. What is another name for angle six? Well, angle six is this angle. So what's another name we could call that angle? Well, if I trace over it, do you see how I could start here at E, go to B, go to D? So angle E, B, D is a good name to call angle six. Let's classify some angles. I bet most of you know what that first angle is. That little box in the corner is a 90 degree box, and so that is going to be a right angle. So this is a right angle, and its measure is exactly 90 degrees. The next angle is less than 90 degrees. That's called an acute angle. I just think of it as a cute little angle, and it is less than 90 degrees. So it's technically between zero and 90. The third type that you see here, this angle right in here, that looks like it's more than 90 degrees. That's called an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle will be more than 90 degrees. It will actually be somewhere between 90 and 180. And then finally, the last angle, it's kind of interesting. This is a wide open angle. It's open totally flat. That is called a straight angle. And a straight angle has a measure of exactly 180 degrees. At this point, please pause the video and try numbers five, six, and seven. When you're done, then unpause the video. So you can see my answers here. If you find angle SYT, if I trace from S to Y to T, we're talking about this angle right in here. To me, that looks like less than 90 degrees, so I circled acute. The next one, angle SYX. Angle SYX, if I trace from X, S to Y to X, that's this angle down here in the red. That looks like it's greater than 90 degrees, so it is obtuse. And then the last one, angle VYX, if I trace from V to Y to X, do you see this box in here? VYX has that 90 degree box, and so it is a right angle. Let's talk about angle bisector. If you bisect something, you cut it perfectly in half. So if you bisect an angle, you cut the angle perfectly in half, and that's what an angle bisector is. Do you see these two red uh, little curved marks in there? That means those angles are the same size. They both have one curved uh, arc in there marking them. So they're the same size. If you would see something like this, um, maybe where one angle has one mark and the other angle has two marks, then those are not the same size. But in our case, we have an angle bisector. So it says an angle bisector is a ray that splits an angle into two other congruent angles. So you can see here, ray xy is an angle bisector. I'm gonna use a symbol for angle bisector. And that means that angle wxy is congruent to, remember that symbol for congruent, angle yxz. So that means those two smaller angles will be the same size. Let's try number eight. So notice it says ray kn bisects angle jkl. Well, if you find angle jkl, here's j to k to l, it's this green angle right here, that's getting bisected by ray kn. That means it's getting cut in half. So what's happening is 
this part and this part are the same size. Now, do you see this little letter M up at the top here where I just marked? It says, if the measure of angle JKN, that, that little M right here means measure. So it says, if the measure of angle JKN equals 8X minus 13, so I'm going to fill that in. Angle JKN is down here, and that part is 8X minus 13. So I'm going to write it in that spot. And angle NKL, which is this spot right here, is 6X plus 11. Find the measure of angle JKN. What I'm thinking is if I could figure out what X is and then plug it in, I could get my answer. So I know that those two angles are the same size. So the 8X minus 13 has to be equal to the 6x plus 11. And so now I can just solve it for x, just like your regular algebra that you've been doing for a long time now. I'm going to add the 13. So we get 2x equals 24. Divide by 2. x equals 12. Now that is not our final answer, because remember the question. The question wants us to find the measure of angle JKN. Well, the measure of angle JKN means we're going to have to take that 12 and plug it in for that X. So it's going to be 8 times 12 minus 13 because JKN is this angle right here. I'm outlining it in blue, and that's what we're trying to sell, solve for. So use your calculator, 8 times 12, and then subtract 13. I believe you're going to get 83 degrees. Now notice I put that little degree symbol on there. So I'm going to have you pause the video, and I'm going to have you try to draw this first line. Try to draw that. All right, if you've unpaused the video, here's what I did. I had angle PQT. So here's P, here's Q, and here's T. And your angle might be bigger or smaller than mine, that's fine. But it says given ray QS bisects angle PQT. So I'm going to try to cut that in half. And so in other words, this side is the same as this side. And this is going to be point S. So now you can see ray QS, it's bisecting that angle. Now I'm going to label my stuff. Angle PQT, that's kind of different. Angle PQT is the whole big angle. It's kind of hard to mark, so I just kind of go like this. That is 6X plus 4, the whole big thing. And then angle TQS, everybody find TQS. That one is 7X minus 2. And they want us to find the measure of angle PQT, the big one. So I'm thinking I need to solve it for X again and then plug in my number for X. So this one's a little tricky because they are not equal to each other. One of those angles is small and one of those angles is bigger. And so they're not equal. But I'm thinking since angle uh, TQS is 7X minus 2, wouldn't this one over here also be 7x minus 2? Don't they have to be the same size? So in other words, if we add those two small ones together, one of the 7x minus 2s plus the other 7x minus 2, it should equal the big one. And the big one is 6x plus 4. So now combine your like terms. On the left, we have 7x and 7x. That's 14x. We have minus 2 and minus 2. That's minus 4. On the right, we have 6x plus 4. So we just combined our like terms. Now we're going to get the x's on the same side of the equal sign. So I'm going to subtract the 6x. So we have 8x minus 4 on the left and positive 4 on the right. Move your constant, which I have a minus 4 over here. So I'm going to add 4 to the other side. These will cancel. I'll have 8x equals 8 and then divide both sides by 8. And it's sort of strange, x equals 1. Is that your final answer? 
The answer is no, you have to plug it in for PQT. So you're gonna take that one and you're gonna plug it in for there. So the measure of angle PQT equals six times one plus four. We just plug that one in. Six times one is six. Six plus four is 10, so it's 10 degrees is your final answer. Is my picture drawn to scale? Not even close. Let's talk about some angle relationships. We've already talked about straight angles. I'm just gonna remind you, a straight angle looks basically like a line. It's 180 degrees. Um, an example, like if I had to name this angle, I would have to put some letters on here. So I'm gonna put three dots and label them A, B, C, go ahead and do that. Then I could call this, for example, angle A, B, C, and it would be a straight angle and it would be 180 degrees. Adjacent angles. So if you've ever had to mow your lawn, you know how you mow around the outside first and you're mowing right next to your neighbor's lawn? That neighbor is your adjacent neighbor. They're right next door to you. So when you have adjacent angles, they're like right next door to each other and they share a boundary. So like right here, angles one and two, those are adjacent angles. So for example, angle one and angle two are adjacent angles. They're right next to each other. Um, they share a side and they share a vertex. In this case, they both start from that same point. Linear pair. Notice I see the word line there. A linear pair is, well, it's a pair, so we have to have two of something. So it's when you have two angles, like here's angle one, here's angle two, but they're basically formed on a line and they add up to be 180 degrees. So an example is angle one and angle two. They would be a linear pair because they're basically a line that's broken into two angles. And vertical angles. What I do is I make an X and I put arrows on the ends, okay? And then I'm gonna number them one, two, three, four. Well, the definition says this, two angles that are not next to each other and are formed by lines that intersect each other. They are angles of equal measure. So right here, angles one and three, they're not right next to each other, they're across from each other. They are a pair of vertical angles. So an example would be angle one and angle three. That would be a pair of vertical angles, how they're across from each other. Also, angle two and angle four. That would be another example of another pair of vertical angles. Lots of vocab today, but this is the end of it on this page here. The next word is complementary angles. If you have two angles that are complementary, they have a sum of 90 degrees. So two angles that if you add them together, they would be 90 degrees. Now, they might look like this, where here's angle one and here's angle two, and this is a 90 degree corner. That would be an example of two complementary angles. So. For example, angle one and angle two. That's just a little and symbol. But the other way that they could look, you might also have some complementary angles that are not touching. So for instance, these two angles. Let's say this angle is 30 degrees and this angle is 60 degrees. Um, they are also complementary angles because they add up to 90. Supplementary angles add up to 180. So it might look like a linear pair. Here's this, maybe this is um, angle one and this is angle two. So that would be one example of a pair of supplementary angles because those two basically together form a straight angle which is 180 degrees. Or you might have one angle that looks like this and another angle that looks like this where Maybe this angle is 30 again, but then this one is 150. So do you see how they add up to 180? That would make them supplementary angles. They are supplements. And last but not least, perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines, what they do is they cross each other, they intersect each other, but they meet at a 90 degree angle. Whoa. 
they meet at a 90 degree angle like that. And so let's say I call this line M and this line N. What I could do is I could say M is perpendicular to N. So M, here's the symbol, upside down capital T to N. So that is how you say that they're perpendicular. So I'm just going to make a little note. The symbol looks like this an upside down capital T. Good job hanging in there. Uh, this is our last page right here. You can do it. So number 10 says name a linear pair. So remember a linear pair looks like this where you have a line and it's divided into two angles. So we have to look for a line like maybe right here. This is a line, right? And if we divide it into two angles, like maybe we could divide it right here. Then what we're gonna get is we're gonna get one angle here and one angle here. And so we could name those. For instance, we could say angle UVP. That is, I'll put the green one right here, UVP. Start at U, trace to V, go to P. And then the one that it makes a linear pair with that would be angle PVR. So I'll do it in blue. So P to V to R. And so this one right here and the green one make a linear pair. All right, last one, number 11, name a pair of acute vertical angles. So first off, remember vertical angles are across from each other in an X, so they're gonna look like this. So first you have to find an X. For number 11, we're looking for acute angles, but they also have to be vertical. So I'm gonna start by trying to highlight an X, but I want um, my angles to look acute. And so maybe if I choose to make my X like that, do you see how right here, and right here, they're across from each other in the X, but they also look like they're acute. They look like they're less than 90. So let's try to name those angles. Let's start with this one on the left, angle U, V, T. So angle U, V, T. And the one on the right, we could all call angle Q, V, R angle Q, V, R. So those are a pair of acute angles, but they are also vertical angles. They're across from each other. I know that was a ton of information, but will you please give a try for unit one, practice four. It's supposed to say practice. Um, and if you have any questions, just message me, you guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great night.